The popularity of Peter's Banded Skinks in the reptile trade community, keeping, hobbying, breeding, whatever you want to call it, is blooming very fast. And unfortunately, there aren't very many care guides, videos, articles, etc. on the internet. So, stick with us, because I'm about to teach you everything you need to know about caring for these wonderful animals. Stick around. Yeah, sorry, hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, by the way, you can win this. Uh, I'm not sure if you're into fishing. If you're new to my channel, welcome, subscribe. We're doing this giveaway for 100 subscribers, so thank you. If you're not already subscribed, join the family. Click the red subscribe button down below. If it's red, it's the wrong color. Make it gray for me. You can win a Guggen Squad Junior Contender uh, Baby Bass Swim Bait, a pack of Lunker Logs and Bandito Bugs, and two packs of Guggen Squad Darts. If you want that stuff, all you gotta do is comment, giveaway down below, be subscribed to the channel, and like the video. Continue. is enclosure and pricing. These are the two things that I personally first look for before I buy an animal, reptile, whatever. Peter Spanda skinks can live in a 20 gallon for their entire life, a 20 gallon long. They're not arboreal, so they don't need height or anything like that. Simple, easy, affordable. They can live in it their whole life. Pricing is pretty cheap. You can find these guys from anywhere between 70 to $100, depending on where you look. Uh, whether it's a website like Josh's Frogs, Backwater Reptiles, something like that, or maybe even a Reptile Expo. However, you might not find them there because, again, they are not very common. Next up is their diet. These creatures are omnivorous, so they'll eat insects, plants, uh, you know, their fruits and veggies, and even sometimes fish. Some meats, you know, stuff like that, sometimes salmon. That's really nice, it's good for nutrition. Um, mine hasn't really ever eaten any plants. Uh, it's not very common for them to, but again, the basics, crickets, stuff like that. You can try feeding meats. Um, however, again, it's not very common for them to actually eat meats and stuff like that. Right now I'm feeding mine a mixture between crickets, super worms, wax worms, horn worms, super worms, you know, dubia roaches, stuff like that. Next up is the temperature for the enclosure and common decorations, stuff that you might want to keep in there. Obviously, number one is a water dish. With an 85 degree daytime temperature, you're going to want about a 100 watt bulb. And the nighttime temperatures can drop as low as 80 to 75 degrees. So you really don't need any sort of heating at night unless your house for some reason gets very cold. I wouldn't recommend an under tank heater uh, unless you have a thermometer to gauge the temperature because they do burrow and they could burn themselves on it. Which brings me to my next point, sand. I know, huge topic of reptile housing, but these guys actually do need sand. One of the very few reptiles that actually can have sand. Another very important thing to note about impaction is that if you pick up the sand and try to scrunch it into a ball with your hand and it doesn't actually stick together, it's not gonna cause impaction and you'll be fine. So yes, these creatures do actually need sand to survive. They are a burrowing creature. They can't do it in wood chips and stuff like that. It is their it is from their natural habitat, they will get stressed out, hurt their nose trying to burrow in things that they can't burrow in, and eventually die. So use sand, please. For the love of your animal, please use sand. It's not going to hurt them if you do it the right way. In my enclosure, I have a nice fake plant, a few pieces of wood, and a nice rock for basking. The rock heats up, stays warm at night, you can go on it if it gets a little chilly, and a warm side and cool side. Sand on one side should be much warmer than sand on the other side so that they can vary and have plenty of room for them to, you know, change their body temperature if one side is getting too hot or if they're done basking or if they just need some shade, you provide a bunch of that. Again, they are not arboreal, so you won't really find them climbing on any of the branches or anything that you put in there, so there's no need for that. It's just, you know, just to add a brain stimulation uh, for them and just to not have a 
barren desert landscape with only sand and maybe a rock. These guys hunt at night, so I don't know if you want to leave a food dish in there, or you can hand feed them. They do eat it. They do eat during the day. I normally feed mine during the day, but if I see him out hunting at night, then normally I'll just give him a few snacks. And there you have it, folks. It is quite simple to care for these wonderful creatures. They are beautiful, they are wonderful, and I think they make a great first starter pet reptile. So thank you so much for watching, and as always, folks, I love you, you beautiful people. Adios. I can't hit the camera. Boom. Okay, goodbye.